Hello and welcome at Empower. In today's video, I want to show you the seven most important technologies to print metal. In total, there are 18 technologies, but for this video, we choose the six most common metal additive manufacturing processes. You can find all 18 processes on our free technology map that we update for you about every few months, since there are new suppliers coming up almost every week. Now, the first technology I want to show you is powder bed fusion. And with over 9,000 systems, this is also the most common and advanced technology. Worldwide, more than 60 suppliers are producing systems based on this technology. Laser or electron beam powder bed fusion is a technology based on metal powder, which is being applied layer by layer and melted with a laser beam or in this case with an electron beam. The first laser systems just had one laser source, but in the future and today more and more systems have up to four laser sources and platform sizes of about 400 by 400 millimeters. The advantage of this technology is definitely the high maturity. This technology is over 20 years old and many systems are already operating in production environment. There are lots of software and post-processing solutions out there and the market is quite competitive which leads to fair pricing when it comes to systems and materials. Also, the material properties and other features like surface roughness and dimension accuracy are very good by now. And many applications are feasible with this technology. However, laser powder bed fusion remains quite slow and quite expensive. And many of the newer technologies target exactly those two pain points. Now, there are two major competing technology groups on the market for powder bed fusion systems, HDR or high deposition ray technologies and sinter based technologies. HDR technologies are using conventional welding or spraying heads on a CNC or a robot system to achieve very high deposition rates. On the other hand, sinter technologies achieve the desired higher productivity by splitting the print process into printing and sintering. Now let's have first a look at the HDR technologies. Many of them are based on wire arc welding processes like this part here. They use a conventional wire welding head, mostly on a CNC system, and they achieve very, very high deposition rates and consequently very low cost also due to the wire. But you can also see it comes with a price of very rough surface, very less details and less geometrical freedom which leads to restrictions to the possible applications. And more, many of the applications you see are more bulky raw parts. You have to machine almost all of those components, all of those parts afterwards. Also, data preparation is very challenging and heat management can be very, very challenging for those technologies since there's a lot of heat induced here. Now, powder laser deposition uh, achieves higher deposition, higher deposition rates um, and a higher surface resolution, finer details are possible with this technology. But again, the higher the detail, the degree of detail becomes, the less productive the process becomes as well. Also, powder as a feedstock material can be quite expensive. Many of those applications make sense in, for example, the repair industry, because you can repair, for example, turbine blades in the, in the stationary or aviation turbine industry. The last um, high deposition rate technology that I want to show you is cold spray. It uses um, a conventional, conventional cold spray process instead of a welding process. Cold spray can lead to very, very high deposition rates. And um, it, it uses powder instead of wire, and it has way less trouble with, uh, for example, heat accumulation. Um, it's also much easier to print materials that are hard to process with other welding processes. For example, copper can be processed very well with this cold spray technologies. And in this case, aluminum, as you can see. But you see again, the surface roughness is quite low. The degree of detail that is possible is lower. Thus you need to uh, machine all those parts um, all around again. Now, let's talk about Sinter technologies here. The systems just print a green part. This means, for example, this is a green part. This means it's made of metal powder and a polymer binding binder. 
After printing, this binder has to be removed and the part has to be sintered. You can see already, after those three process steps, you have a dense, fully dense metal part that can be processed further. But the part is also shrinking, as you can see, since the binder is being removed. So it's a different size and you have to, you have to consider that during printing. Now, there are two different major technologies for sinter-based uh, uh, um, additive manufacturing. The one is metal FDM. That's the part I showed you here. It's based on conventional fused deposition mod modeling, and it's just replacing the polymer fi filament with a compound filament made of metal powder and a binder. The FDM printer is producing the green part, which must be slightly larger than the fine geometry, because if you uh, sinter it in the end, it shrinks. As I told you. After printing the polymer binder must be removed and out of the green part and depending on the process this works for example with solvents and this also works with works with uh, catalytic uh, debinding processes. And after debinding you uh, get a so-called brown part which just consists of the metal powder and of a few leftover second level binder and this then can be sintered. Now the entry barrier for this technology is quite low, since FDM technology is not very expensive. However, the feedstock material is very expensive. It can range from 100 euro per kilogram, around 100 euro per kilogram for a simple stainless steel to several hundred euros for other steels. And the process is not very fast and you're just printing one part at a time. Also, what is very challenging is the deformation of the parts. It becomes very hard to predict the deformation during sintering. And that leads to several iterations you need until you have a part that meets your, your requirements regarding dimensional accuracy. We see this technology, for, uh, metal FDM, mostly in the area of jigs and fixtures, for example, or fast prototypes. Now, let's have a look at binder jetting. Binder jetting is the second uh, sinter-based technology. You can see uh, here already very small detailed parts from, um, in this case, X1 here, uh, digital metal. And here the, uh, the binder is being applied to a powder bed, layer by layer. A fluid binder is being applied by, um, by a binder jetting system with a conventional inkjet head, as you want. And um, this results in a green part. The, whole, uh, the, the advantage is that you don't need any supports for printing and you don't need any... Um, um, you can stack the parts on top of each other. You can put them in a hold build uh, chamber and put uh, print several parts at once in one build chamber. Now, after printing, this, this, uh, the whole print job has to be cured in a curing oven. And after this is done, you can um, unpack the parts from the powder cake. This can be quite tricky because the parts, the green parts are very, um, are very fragile and can break very fast. And the powder cake can be quite firm. So this is complete manual work to actually unpack those, uh, in this case, very small, uh, fine detail parts. After unpacking, the parts don't have to go through a debinding process like metal FDM because the degree of binder is much lower. You have a very low binder satu satu saturation in binder jetting parts. They can go straight into a sintering furnace, but they first run through a cycle of uh, uh, burning out the binder at a lower temperature, and then later on it's followed by um, the actual sintering process. Now, this technology has a high potential for very high productivity, at least for small parts. Larger parts uh, do make some trouble, again, when uh, during sintering, it can be very challenging to predict the deformation that, that occurs during sintering. And this, this uh, is the same case here for binder jetting in this case. But it's a very promising technology in, for the future, at least for, for parts and alloys that can be processed um, via sintering. Now, I hope you enjoyed this overview. Don't forget to download our free technology map where you can see all the 18 technology in an overview. It's a free PDF that you can uh, download. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.